Hello and welcome to my garage. We are out here today because I am getting my floors redone, so I can't go in my house. But that does not stop my need to sew. Do you ever feel that you are just itching for adventure? Is the mummy perhaps your truest aesthetic? What about the new Jungle Cruise movie? Do you look really good in khaki? Well, me too. Actually, I'm not so sure about the looking good in khaki, but we're gonna find out. A while ago, my dad gave me these trousers that he used to wear to work, and I was looking at them and thinking to myself, these could be adventure shorts. <laughs> So today we are going to try and make these fit me, some of that fun, adventure fashion into my life before the summer is over. The lovely ladies who led me to the conclusion that I needed more khaki in my life are the closet historian who has a whole adventure lookbook. I'll paste the picture of her up right here and talk to the palm on Instagram who often wears these kinds of colors, I think for a work uniform. All right, let's get started do was dance in your pants. Uh, but actually, no, this is just to show you that they're not fitting quite well and we're gonna have to take in the waist quite a bit. Uh, my dad is not huge, but he is definitely taller than me. So what I'm doing is I'm just marking the length of the pants, being real careful not to get those pockets, and the waist measurement. I also took this waist measurement for myself just so I knew approximately how uh, wide the opening of the trousers was going to be. I then decided to take all the bulk out of the back. So I seam ripped the center back seam open so that I could sew it back up with more seam allowance, making it smaller altogether. I need to get rid of the seam ripper because it was awful and didn't want to actually do its job. After I had the back seam ripped open as far as I wanted it, I just sort of figured out how many inches in that line would be where I needed to sew. And this is that line pinned. And I sewed along that line back stitching at both ends. Hi there, we're going to take a quick break and just chat about some history. When I started this project, I really was wondering, how did khaki go from military wear to office wear? So I did a little bit of research to find out and I thought I would share it all with you. I haven't done a research project since college and that was many years ago. So my sources are listed down below. I also want to give a quick warning that we are going to be talking about colonization is not something that I support. However, it is a, a reoccurring instance throughout history, so I want to be transparent. That is coming up, so if you don't want to hear about it, just skip forward in the video to this time and you can get back to sewing. Let's start with the Corps of Guides. The Corps of Guides was established in 1846 and was headed up and was led by Lieutenant Harry Lumsden and W.S.R. Hodson. They're thought of as the first regiment in the British Army to have worn khaki in hot climates as a military uniform. There's a couple of different stories about how they came to wear the khaki. However, this is the one that I heard the most when I was doing my research. The standard uniform that the Corps of Guides would have worn at the time would have consisted of white trousers, a smock shirt, and the bright red jacket worn by the British Army for years before. However, since they were occupying India at the time, the rest, which were traditionally made of wool, proved to be very poor kit in the warm climate of India. And also the brightly dyed color of the fabric made the men extremely easy to spot in a skirmish. Hodson is known for writing a letter and requesting drab clothing for 900 men. At this time, the word drab wouldn't be thought of as a way to describe something that was boring or dull. It would have been more 
referring to the color of the cotton twill fabric we would later come to know as khaki. His intention with this drab clothing was to make his men invisible in a land of dust. That sounded like vaguely like Sean Connery, I am so sorry. The Corps of Guys were later referred to by Sir, Sir Charles James Napier, who was the British appointed governor of Sindh at the time, as the only properly dressed light troops in India. By the 1860s, the khaki colored uniforms were adopted by the rest of the British Army. The American military first brought on khaki for use during the Spanish American War. Up until that time, the United States Army was still wearing the dark navyish blue that had been working for them for years and years before. To the large number of volunteers who were falling ill due to dehydration and exhaustion, the army had to come to terms with the fact that this color wasn't working anymore and they needed to explore lighter fabrics and lighter tones if they were going to keep the men moving as part of a soldier's hot weather field dress. With the continued use of khaki in the military, onwards into World War I and World War II, it became a patriotic item of clothing to wear. If you had khaki, you were essentially dressing like the people who were defending your country, and that made it very popular amongst civilians. We started seeing more and more khaki trousers, chinos, and work pants coming into fashion, leading many trouser-wearing individuals to choose it as their lightweight summer office wear of choice. All right, let's get back to some sewing. If you enjoyed this little history moment, please let me know. Oh, I also just realized we're at 165 subscribers here on the channel. Thank you so much for everybody who has subscribed. It really means so much to me. Um, it's really special and I just wanted to say thank you so much. So the next step in the sewing is to take the waistband, open it up, flatten it out, and then sew a line down to wherever the excess of your seam is. I feel like I did a crummy job filming this. Basically, you're just taking the extra bulk out of the waistband. And now I'm semi. <laughs> now I am trimming the seam allowance from that chunk that we sewed up the back to make it less bulky. After closing the waistband back up, I just stitched in the ditch in between the two seams to make sure everything was locked in place. Make sure you hydrate. Then it was time to crop the paint. Hello, I am sorry about sound. I am moving back in. I don't know where my mic is. We're doing the best we can. Sounded vaguely Canadian there. All right, so all that's really left is to pop a hem in these babies. Oh, they're inside out. Pop a hem in these babies and then put a button onto the fly because it has one of these little hooky clefts on the inside and I want the look of a button being right here. I think I might also put some on the side. I'm worried the butt's gonna be weird. I don't know about the shape. It might not be concave enough, uh, so the butt might be weird. However, everyone's butt is a little weird, and I'm gonna take solace in that. You've heard of uh, mom's jeans, but have you heard of rockin' dad's khakis? I'm procrastinating, I'll just get started now. <laughs> Oh, I am your dad on vacation. Oh. We're gonna see 
what we can do about that. <laughs> We doggies romping about mere specimens that they are. This is truly a wonderful day. Look at her chew that stick. All right, wrap up time. I think that that project actually went pretty darn well, considering. The butt was not as weird as I thought it was, uh, and I was able to just zhuzh it a little bit so that it made more of a natural but shape once I actually finish the shorts. So that was really good. Uh, they're comfy, they're easy to wear. Because of the pleats in the front, I did feel a little bit like, like a small child in bloomers. However, uh, I think that is just the nature of pleated plants. Altogether, I'm pretty happy with them. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. We've got lots of new projects coming up in the new future. And I will see you in my next video. All right. Bye-bye.